Uh, good uh, morning, uh, folks. Uh, this is Father Walsh, and we're just going to have a brief look, a very brief look at uh, Pentecost Sunday, which is uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, Pentecost, as you know, it's uh, after Easter and, and Christmas. Uh, Pentecost is one of the, the key uh, celebrations of the of the liturgical year, the, the celebration of the, of the giving the giving of the, of the Spirit and. Uh, um, it's described in a variety of different ways in different places, but uh, the one that uh, that's obviously most familiar to us is uh, the event that's in, in, the, in the Acts of the Apostles. So I just want to talk about that a little bit today, where, you know, Pentecost, the word Pente means 50, so it, actually Pentecost Sunday uh, happens 50, 50 days after Easter, and um, uh, as is described in, in um, in the Acts of the Apostles, after after Jesus rose from the dead, the, the apostles obviously uh, got together, and uh, finally we're told that uh, the last ten days prior to Pentecost, they were together in in a room, uh, in a room uh, wait, waiting sort of for, for, for the coming of the Spirit. Uh, they'd been promised. Jesus had promised that. Uh, Jesus had promised that uh, after he left the advocate. Uh, the advocate would, would, co would come and would really uh, convince them, convince them of all truth, and so the advocate, meaning the Spirit, did come on, on Pentecost Sunday, and that's the event which is which is described is described in the very beginning, beginning of uh, chapter two of the Acts of the Apostles. And believe, believe it or not, uh, the actual coming of the Spirit is described in just four four or five sentences. It's, it's I think it's just. Uh, Worth worth reading it. Says when the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. There appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to speak. So there you have, in a very, very brief uh, couple of sentences, you have the giving, the giving of the Spirit. And the two words, the two words that are used for the giving, for the giving of the Spirit, uh, one is the Spirit came as a strong driving wind. Uh, the other word that's used is tongue, tongues of fire came, up, came, upon the, came upon the apostles. Now, if you look elsewhere at the giving of the Spirit, the Spirit is, is described as the breath of God, where Jesus breathed on the apostles and says, uh, receive, "Receive the Holy Spirit." So this is sort of the, it's the same message, given in, in in different ways. But here, here it's given given on uh, it's given uh, by, by 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 given to the apostles on on that fifty days after Easter, and Fe Pentecost was was a, Pentecost was actually. A, a Jewish celebration, a Jewish celebration of the harvest. So it was a time there were, there were a lot of people, a lot of people in, in Jerusalem for, for the celebration. And so as soon as the Spirit came upon the apostles, they felt uh, transform, transformed and uh, sort of they felt a, a, new, a new vitality. We know that, uh, you know, after they, after they, Christ left them, when Christ, as Christ prepared for his for his death, or as he was being prepared for his death, we know that the apostles bailed out uh, out, out of fear uh, because they obviously they were afraid that the same thing was going to, it was going to happen to them. So so that, so they disappeared, and they obviously they came together. They came together after um, after the resurrection of Jesus, and uh, that the opportunity that been the opportunity of been re reconciled with him, and certainly. The one who needed reconciliation above, all, above and beyond all else was Peter himself. So Peter obviously was was reconciled to the Lord, and so the Spirit came upon them on Pentecost Sunday, and all, all of a sudden, with the coming of the Spirit, they fe they felt enlivened, and so they go outside and they start preaching straight away. And uh, we're told that they spoke in in different tongues, and the people, the people, a large group of people who were there. Were amazed, and they're amazed that were not all these people who are, who are uh, who are preaching are they not Galileans? How is it that each of us hears them preaching in in, her, in in his own tongue? Anyhow, that's the event. It was a powerful event. Of course, as soon as as soon as the 
as soon as the uh, that initial thing uh, finishes, then Peter sort of takes over, and, and, and Peter Peter starts to preach, and Peter, Peter, Peter's message is a very it's a very powerful one because uh, because of the fact that Peter for the first time. You know, Jesus is described in um, the Gospel of St. Luke as, as a rock, and perhaps uh, it's only in, in the Acts of the Apostles when he, when he starts to preach and to teach, and ultimately to heal, that, that we can say that, that he, he truly, he truly become, becomes a rock. So uh, perhaps without going into any more detail, we could ask the question, well, why, why did the Spirit have such a prom- such a prom- which is such a profound effect upon the apostles, and I think the answer is fairly obvious. The answer is that they were they were ready for the coming of the Spirit. Okay, while Jesus was while they were in the company of Jesus while while he was on earth, um, they were very they were ordinary individuals like like all of us, but uh, they were sort of like self made men and. Uh, they still believe that uh, they, they had a lot to offer. I think with the, with the coming of this, with the the death of Christ, that they all felt totally rejected. They felt as if that that nothing to offer, nothing to offer to the world. And it was sort of a, in their emptiness, in their emptiness, and that feel, feeling of the powerlessness, powerlessness. They were totally powerless because uh, because of, of the death of Christ. And it was only with that feeling of emptiness that the Spirit could really uh, accomplish great things in their lives and bring about bring about that trans- transformation. I think that is a lot to say to us also because the Spirit that was given uh, to the Apostles is the same self same Spirit that's given to us in, in the Sacrament of Confirmation. And, and, and in essence, it's a reminder to us that the Spirit, God's Spirit, would be from that time onward uh, that God's Spirit would be would be with us uh, during the entire course of our lives, but uh, the point about it is uh, that Spirit can can remain very very inactive. Uh, so, uh, so in other words, we have to activate we have to activate that Spirit that is within us. And I think the two the two ways that we we can bring about that activity of the Spirit is first of all the when, like the apostles, we we feel powerless, and when, like like, like uh, the apostles or disciples, we feel that uh, that uh, we're not dependent upon ourselves. That we're 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 turning it we're turning it over to the Lord, and when we turn it to, over to the Lord and allow Him to speak in and through us, then we can accomplish great things. Similarly, I think that when we're doing the work of the Lord, when when our desire is not to do something. To to uh, sort of glorify ourselves, but some that would it would uh, that will indeed um, give glory to the Lord as as we attempt to do that. We can be quite sure we can be quite sh- sure that uh, that the trans- transformative power of the Spirit will become very evident in our lives. So this is Sunday, this celebration it's it's a celebration of the birth of the church. It's a celebration of the church as it exists today. And remember, each one of us. Is church. Uh, we become church when we're baptized and confirmed. And like those early apostles, I think we we have a responsibility to make the church more real in the society in which we do today, today where, which we live today. And I think uh, we bring about that uh, realization every every time that we sort of die to ourselves in order to allow God's Spirit to uh, enliven and transform us. Thank you, and God bless.